Flower communion is one of the most widely celebrated rituals in Unitarian Universalism. And it is typically a day of joy, honoring the power of community and the gifts we share. Today feels more somber though, we've already noted, but we still recognize the power of this day and of this celebration. So if you brought a flower today, I would love for you to hold it up to your camera so we can all see the beautiful flowers that we all brought. Yay, look at all our beautiful flowers. As a reminder, if your screen, um, if you're not seeing everybody's face, just go up to the top and click where it says speaker view or gallery view, and you should be able to see everyone's face and scroll through. Look at this beautiful community of faces and flowers. The flower communion or the flower celebration might have had earlier roots, but the version of flower communion that we know today was begun by the Unitarian minister Norbert Chapek and his wife Maya, who served the large Unitarian congregation in Prague, Czechoslovakia during World War II. All right, Adam, I think, can we go back to Spotlight? We will see each other's faces again momentarily. So Norbert Chapek and his wife Maya served the largest Unitarian congregation at the time in the world in Prague, Czechoslovakia during World War II. This uniquely Unitarian ritual invites everyone to be, uh, to be present together and to bring a flower to the table. And usually we are gathered in person to bring these beautiful flowers together as a vibrant bouquet, symbolic of the community of lives whose experiences, beliefs, and gifts come together in ways that are truly more beautiful than when we are apart. But as you might expect, Chapek's celebration of diversity was not accepted by the Nazi regime of their time. Chapek refused to be quiet, refused to stop working toward a world where the lives of all people, not just a select few, were valued for their inherent worth and dignity. And for his teaching, his preaching, and his action, but specifically for the crime of listening to a foreign radio station, Chapek was imprisoned. Just a moment. Chapek was imprisoned at a concentration camp called Dachau. The legend surrounding Chapek says that even as a prisoner, he and the others secretly celebrated the flower celebration using little grasses. He died as a prisoner, but the hope and the message of Chapek lives on in us today. We seek the courage to continue to proclaim his message loudly and clearly in the face of a world that continually fails to recognize the power of diversity, the strength in difference, and the gift of community. When we celebrate flower communion, we bring the gift of our flower freely just as we come to this community freely, bringing the gifts that we have to offer. And when we are able to celebrate in person, we share the flowers. We each come and we receive a flower to take home, a different flower than the one that we brought. We are unable to do that ritual this morning and nothing makes me sadder than the fact that we can't do this ritual this morning but we acknowledge the ways that this ritual is only symbolic. It's symbolic of the truth that has continued to be made real, even though we are at a physical distance. It is symbolic of the truth that we are not the same 
when we depart from this community as when we arrive. We seek to continually remain open to the lessons that we receive from each other, to be changed by the presence of our community, to hear the experiences that are different from our own, to challenge our own biases, to examine our beliefs, and to deepen our commitments. Like the flowers that grow after a terrible winter or in harsh conditions or through the cracks in the sidewalk, may we bloom wherever we are planted, nourished by the soil of our faith, and be willing to share ourselves with the world. May it be so, and amen. In the spirit of flower communion, we had a project this spring. We created a photo mosaic using the photos of you that you submitted to us. We made a beautiful bouquet created by the people of this beloved community. As we hear this song, I know this rose will open, shared by UU musician, Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout. Let's look at this mosaic image and remember the purpose of our community to allow each person to blossom into our full humanity. <laughs> 